first. Let's start with our top story. Major blow, surprising revolt, political bomb. Just some of the ways an unexpected setback for Angela Merkel is being described today, fueling speculation that after 13 years, major cracks are forming in her coalition. Well, the German chancellor had handpicked Volker Kauder to lead her center-right coalition, but in a surprise move last night, members of her party voted against him. Instead, they chose the challenger Ralph Brinkhaus, and here's what Merkel had to say afterwards. Das ist eine Stunde der Demokratie, in der gibt es auch Niederlagen und da gibt es auch nichts zu beschönigen. Aber trotzdem möchte ich, dass die CDU-CSU-Bundestagsfraktion erfolgreich weiterarbeitet. Und deshalb werde ich Ralf Brinkhaus, wo immer ich das kann, auch unterstützen. Well, she's almost, you know, shrugging it off there, almost as if it's not a big deal. But how big of a deal is it? David, I'll go to you. Is the media making a big deal using all these strong words? Well, the election of Ralf Brinkhaus yesterday was a surprise not only for the political landscape in Berlin, but also for our own parliamentary party. But on the other hand, change is something normal in democracy, also in internal parliamentary party democracy. So Ralph Brinkhaus might bring some new ideas, some fresh ideas and new action to our parliamentary work. But he very, made very clear that he fully backs Angela Merkel as a person and also her policy. And Ralph Brinkhaus has served as vice deputy leader under Volker Kaud over the last few years. So I think it's not that exciting as some journalists believe it might be. But he be. hasn't been overly critical of Angela Merkel. That is true of her policies. That is true. But he is open to the ideas of the opposition. James, what is your reading of, of, of this uh, surprise? I mean, I think move? basically anyone who underestimates Angela Merkel uh, is a fool. I think she's proved herself to be a great survivor. I don't think you can underestimate the effect, well, the extent to how some politicians here in Brussels have had it in for Mrs Merkel ever since she uh, opened the borders to the migration, uh, to the migrants. Uh, I personally think that was quite a heroic move. Many other people think that it may have sown the seeds of her destruction and also mm. set up this battle between populist nationalist forces and pro-EU forces in the European Parliament elections. And her, uh, her uh, I think the problem here is if, if, if this was an isolated defeat or, you know, she said she didn't want to sugarcoat it, it is democracy in action, you know, we wouldn't be talking about this. But what we've seen really since the election, this rather, you know, unstable coalition, is, uh, you know, stumbling kind of essentially from one problem uh, to another. Uh, that is not good. And when you've been around for 13 years, you do start to, no matter how good you are, no matter how uh, powerful you have been in the past, you start to move into that almost lame duck stage where you kind of events spiral beyond your control. Mm. And it, there is a sense, I feel, that we're now in that situation in Germany. Well, let's get more of a sense of what is actually happening in Germany. Uh, let's get perspective from there, from a Politico's chief Europe correspondent, Matt Karnichnik, uh, joining us from Berlin. Matt, is this really the beginning of the end for Angela Merkel? Well, I think there's no doubt that it's a major defeat for her because she had a hand-picked person that she wanted to lead the group, the same man who'd led it for the past 13 years and who, in fact, had been her deputy at one point when she held that position. So I think that there is really no question here that this is a major defeat for Merkel. And the, the real question is how much longer can she hold on as she faces a number of other challenges in the coming months with the election in Bavaria coming up in mid-October and another one in the state of Hesse. And then she herself will face election uh, within the party in December when the uh, CDU holds its uh, party Congress. So I think that Merkel is uh, on the ropes at the moment. And as was said previously, she is a survivor, but uh, she's had so many crises with this new government. If you think back to uh, just the, the last few months, uh, you know, the, with the coalition that she put together with the Social Democrats almost collapsing on a couple of occasions, mainly due to the type of infighting that we've seen over the past couple of days. So I, I think that there's no doubt that this is the beginning of sort of maybe the gradual end of Merkel, but she's no longer the sort of unquestioned uh, leader of Germany that she has been for a long time. All right, thank you for that. Uh, Matthew Karnichnik, uh, Politico's chief Europe correspondent, they're talking to us from Berlin. So I'd like to put this question, I think you raised that idea earlier. Is it really so bad if Merkel is no longer at the helm? Stefan Seibert, our government spokesperson, made very clear today that Angela Merkel won't call for a vote of confidence, and rightly so. Why should she? 
She has the full support of her political party and the CDU-CSU group. Ralph Brinkhouse was very clear uh, yesterday evening and also the hall of today. And we now are facing a not easy situation in Germany. That's correct. It's rather unusual that a CDU-CSU group leader has voted out of office in a meeting. This is a surprise for many. But what we have to do now is concentrate on the enormous challenges we are facing in Germany. And if we do that, housing, nursing, pension, the health system, many other issues, then we can regain the confidence of the yeah, voters. Yeah. David, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to jump in. I mean, you talk about the enormous problems in Germany. I mean, things aren't going that great in Britain. Theresa May has been going from crisis to crisis to crisis, and she keeps clinging on. I mean, I look at Germany and I think you've got it easy. I don't think this is a crisis for Angela Merkel. I don't think you guys know what a crisis is. <laughs> Well, that's why I just heard, I agreed with most of what you said, but I certainly wouldn't use the term lame duck for Angela Merkel. That <laughs> certainly isn't true. The exact opposite is she is the chancellor, she is the leader of the party, and she will decide if she runs again as our party chairwoman, and we will decide on the next federal political conference how, in December. How, how much, forget about the rights and wrongs of the decision made in 2015 around immigration, but how much is the, the trouble that she's in, the problems that she faces, the last election result, how much is that down to that All right, I'll give you 30 seconds to answer that. David. Well, the last election result wasn't easy, and we would have liked to have had another coalition with the Liberals and the Green Party, but the Liberals ran away, so we had to continue the Grand Coalition. But I want this Grand Coalition to succeed, so we have to concentrate now on the issues and stop fighting openly. That is what's getting on people's nerves I'd, I'd also like to bring up the, the, what, what Europe is thinking with, with you know, the, the stability of Europe, we can say, is dependent on the stability of Germany. Is that, is that a fair thing to say? Oh. I, I think that's undoubtedly true, and clearly Angela Merkel has been, you know, not just a powerful figure in Germany, but a very, the most powerful figure in, in, uh, in Europe over the last, you know, decade or so. Um, what happens when she departs? We don't know. It's one of the reasons, clearly, why Emmanuel Macron has taken on this, uh, you know, this mantle to a degree, uh, really, since he's been elected.